Hello everyone, I'm Kirby, this is Kirby Meets Audio, and today we're going to talk about how to read one of these. This is probably the question I get asked the most. How do you read a crossover diagram? Um, I totally understand why it could be difficult the first time you look at a crossover diagram to understand what it means and how to translate it into real life. Uh, there's a bunch of numbers and lines and weird symbols. Um, but once you uh, have a frame of reference for what each thing stands for, how they all fit together, uh, it, it's really easy. And you'll definitely be able to do your own um, with whatever project you're working on. Just as a little side note, it's raining right now in California, which is a really good thing. But it's like raining right there, like right there. So hopefully it's not being picked up by the mic too much. Um, if it is, I'm sorry. But here we go. I include a crossover diagram in all my speaker build kits and plans that I offer on my website. If you want to check those out, you can hit the link right up there. i also put a link down in the description. Um, they're a great way to start uh, in this hobby of speaker building. I'm also going to add a few links down there to a few resources that I used when I first drove into crossover diagrams. Um, so if you don't get all the information you need here, check those out. They're really good stuff. Okay, okay, so let's walk through a few different parts of a crossover diagram. Okay, so there's really three main parts to crossover diagrams or crossovers in general. Uh, there's capacitors, there's inductors, and there's resistors. So the symbol for a capacitor is these two lines right here. Capacitors come in all sorts of values and sizes, uh, anything from this little guy all the way up to big guys like this. The symbol for an inductor is this little squiggly line right here. An air core inductor looks like this. There's also copper foil inductors as well as solid core inductors. I don't have either of those with me today, um, but I encourage you to Google them if uh, you want to find out more information. So the third component would be a resistor. Uh, we don't actually have any resistors in this crossover diagram, uh, but it would look something like that. Be a little squiggly line. So it looks similar to the inductor symbol. Um, the inductor symbol is a little wavy. It's kind of like a spiral almost, uh, while the resistor symbol is more squiggly, it's sharp. So these lines in between the electrical components uh, just symbolize an electrical connection. So you can think of them as kind of like wires, although you don't actually want to use wires to connect your components together. And we'll get that, we'll get into that a little bit more later. Um, you just think of it as electricity is able to flow between these components in this configuration. So I think the best way to really understand how a crossover diagram or a crossover goes together is to draw it out. So what I'm going to do is go through a two-step drawing process of this crossover diagram um, to really try to conceptualize what's going on here. Uh, you probably want to use a pencil. When you do this at home, uh, mistakes do happen. Pencil, yay. So first I'm gonna draw out all the components with negative leads as grounds. Oh, and I'm mostly, I, I'm just gonna focus on this bottom part. So this is a two channel crossover. Um, really don't, we're not worried about this one so much. We're just worried about this. This is more of a, this is more of just a, uh, a low pass filter on the woofer. And this is more of a traditional crossover where you have a tweeter and a woofer. All right, let's do this. All right, so as you can see, it's a pretty simple diagram. We can put this up to compare. All right, so as you can see, we can start out with our positive. So our positive goes into the first capacitor, which will go on our first capacitor here. 
Uh, the, and then into the inductor, which goes to ground. Inductor, which goes to ground. And then over into our tweeter. And then the negative side of our tweeter goes into ground. Now for the woofer, we go from positive right here to the inductor first. So we go from positive to the inductor and then to the capacitor. So we'll go from the inductor to the capacitor and then from the capacitor into the positive side of the woofer, which is the positive side of the woofer, and then the negative will go to ground, negative ground. So that's just a way to contextualize uh, the layout of the crossover uh, without having as many leads to uh, confuse things. All right, next we're gonna draw out what it'll look like with the actual components in a little bit of a different uh, orientation. Might be a little easier to understand it. All right, let's try that. And we'll use this diagram to do the next one because it'll be similar, you'll see. So as you can see, it's pretty much the same drawing, except we used the look of the actual components instead of the symbols. So here, this is an inductor coil. This is a capacitor. And you can see how it lays out pretty simply. Uh, starts with the positive, right? For the tweeter, we go up into the capacitor which is right here. And then we go over into the inductor. The inductor goes to the ground or to negative, just like ground would be right here. And then the positive goes into the positive side of the tweeter. Negative goes to the ground, to the negative uh, point. For the woofer, we start out with the inductor. So that would be the inductor here. Then we go over into the capacitor, which goes to ground or negative and then over into the positive side of the woofer and the negative side goes back to ground. So once you, I hope, once you get to this point, it makes it a little easier to see how the components actually lay out. So the main goal here is to do this a few times with a few different uh, crossover diagrams. Some, this is a relatively simple crossover. Um, a lot of them are going to be much more complicated with many more components. Um, but start small, start easy, uh, and hopefully after you do a few, you'll be able to just look at a diagram like this and just automatically see this and then convert that to this just in your mind. Um, and obviously that's the easiest way to do it. But do this a few times uh, to get there. It's, it's, it's pretty simple. So now we're going to actually use the components and do a dry fit. See what it looks like. All right, here we go. So we can actually do this right on top of our drawing. So on our tweeter side, we'll have our capacitor, which goes into our inductor. So we'll just kind of twist these together just roughly to lay out the board. And then on our woofer side, we'll start with the inductor. Which will go into our capacitor. So our capacitor and our inductor on the negative side will go together. This is all going to shit, but it's okay. This is just a, a rough fit. Oh my gosh. Okay. <laughs> all right. So uh, this isn't pretty, but uh, 
you can kind of see in the middle, this is pretty much what it looks like on the diagram. So on our tweeter, we'll have a wire coming from this point, right? Because this is this point right here, which will go into our tweeter, into go into the positive. And then this point is our negative. We can draw this. Positive goes into the positive end of the tweeter. Negative goes into the negative end. So we have our woofer. So in our diagram, the positive right here, which would be represent right here, goes into the positive side of the woofer. And then our same negative will go to the negative side of the woofer. And those will just be wired in. So that's pretty much how you put together a crossover from a diagram. Um, it's super simple uh, once you understand how the diagram works. Um, it looks really complicated when you're looking at that. But once you get to this point, um, it really starts to simplify and it gets pretty easy. Um, now a few things past this point. Um, you can spend a lot of time, especially with more complicated crossovers with many more components, uh, fitting the components together in a very neat and orderly manner. Obviously this is not how I would put it on a board. Especially in small systems, um, it, it, you, you need the crossover to be pretty tight to get it into the enclosure. So a few things to note when uh, you're making small crossover, or when you're grouping crossover components together in a small uh, housing, I guess. Um, one thing, I guess the most important thing, the one thing, is inductors. So inductors can't be close together. So when they're close together, we'll take this apart a little bit just so I can show this. When crossovers are close together like this, they will interact with each other and they won't be optimal for your crossover. They won't work correctly. So one way to do that, like I had it before, is to get them as far away from each other as possible. Um, three to four inches, five inches is better. Um, but a minimum of three inches usually works fine. Now, of course, that doesn't work in all situations. So when you do have to have crossovers close together, the best thing to do is to have one sitting upright and one sitting flat. Just like that. And you want them in this orientation. So what you don't want is something like this. You don't want to be able to see through this inductor, the hole in this inductor, and see another inductor. And that comes into play mostly when uh, you have more uh, inductors on your crossover board. So if you have four in inductors, uh, it's a little more difficult to place them all uh, without having them crowd each other or not or without having them see each other through each other's holes. Um, you can also do them on you know, diagonals. You just don't want them straight on and you, you want them off axis. And that's pretty much it. All right, I'm gonna go back up to the top, to the top one. So remember, it's just important to take your time, really try to visualize, draw it out as many times as you need to, because um, it's really a bummer to get it all together, all soldered up, and then realize that it's wrong. Um, not fun. Um, but that's it. Thanks so much for watching. I hope that helped. Check out the resources. Um, it, it might be easier to read. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> Whatever works for you. Um, but yeah, thanks for watching and I'll see you again soon. Bye. Oh, there's stuff in the way. Oh no. Can't walk out. All right, bye.